What's shaking cats and kittens? Rob Lee here, and today's episode of The Truth in His Art is sponsored by a new online art platform called Fire and Bliss Creative. Fire and Bliss is the first art platform that I've seen that focuses on the art of the LGBTQ plus BIPOC and allied artists exclusively. And I have to say, the pieces are amazing. Whether you're looking specifically to add diverse art to your collection, or you have a space that needs a bit of updating, every single print on fireandbliss.com has been created by a diverse, independent artist who maintains full control over their art and their profit. I work with Fire and Bliss to curate a collection of my favorite pieces, like Somewhere Blue by Wodrich Francois. Shop my favorites at fireandbliss.com backslash truth and get 20% off your first purchase at Fire and Bliss. Again, that's fireandbliss.com backslash truth and use the code truth for 20% off your first purchase. A special message from this month's presenting sponsor. Learn about Baltimore's rich industrial legacy through working galleries that explore the history of the Bethlehem steel mill, an antique print shop, a garment loft, and more at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. The BMI. Hours and information at thebmi.org. Also, use the code TRUTH50, that is TRUTH50, my special code, and get 50% off of admission at the front desk or use it when purchasing the tickets online. So please visit thebmi.org and make that trip today. Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I have the privilege of speaking with the creator of the style blog, Catterday, who is originally from Lafayette, Louisiana, now based in Baltimore. Please welcome Elise Richard. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Hello. I'm so honored, especially <laughs> with that intro. <laughs> <laughs> I try to I try to gas it up and then it's like the rest of the podcast is just going to fall flat. But at least the <laughs> intro is good. <laughs> hey, 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 we're going to we're going to keep it up there. I love the positive energy. Um, so for those who are undipped, un un unfamiliar, I did a kind of a copy and paste as far as the intro. But I want to allow you to introduce yourself and, um, and and share really what brought you to Baltimore. Yeah. So, hi, my name is Elise, and I've been in Baltimore for almost 10 years now, and I am a mom. I have a daughter who is nine, about to be 10, and what brought me here, truthfully, honestly, I moved, every, everyone always asks me this question. I'm like, honestly, I moved up here with my ex. Mm -hmm. So I moved up here right after graduating college, go Tigers. <laughs> and she got a job up here with Teach for America. And I just kind of followed her because I was like, I didn't really have a plan after graduating. We just moved up here and the rest is history. I've stayed here and I love it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. And, um, you know, making your way up here and kind of coming from uh, the South, I think there there is some. And, and, and also the other thing is legitimately the South, because there are some places that say, oh, we're the South. They're like, no, you're not. So coming from the South and moving up here, did, did some of those like um, sensibilities that you were familiar with down in Louisiana really like pop up here in any way? Did you see any familiarities between the culture there versus the culture here when you moved up? Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because people consider Maryland the South. And I, whenever I moved up here, I was like, um, no, absolutely not. I don't know what you're talking about. This is not the South because that's, that's where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> but there are definitely a lot of similarities though, too. Baltimore reminds me of New Orleans in lots of ways. Because whenever I moved up here, they're like, oh my God, did you have culture shock? <laughs> not, truthfully, not really, because as much as I love the country, I'm also more of a city girl. So mm -hmm. I, I, I love it here. And Baltimore is small-ish, big city-ish kind of vibes. Yeah. But it's similar to New Orleans to me because it's kind of gritty, but still has the charm. Yeah. And 
also, as much as I miss my Southern Cajun deliciousness, Baltimore <laughs> does have some banging food and similar seafood kind of vibes too. So it's not too far off. So you like swap the crawfish for like crabs or something? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> but I do miss my crawfish boils. I had crawfish. This this seat. So here's the thing. I love um, New Orleans. That is my um, like. I may eventually relocate there. I've been there three, maybe four times, and you know, it's just like it's about my speed. It's about my culture, uh, yeah. and it's a good mix of different people. And it has the things I like: ultra, uh, food, art, culture. It's it's there. Yeah. Um, and I think when you're in, you, in New Orleans, you know you're in New Orleans. I think there's a di distinction and there's qualities and traits in terms of architecture to people, all of that different stuff that make it unique. From your vantage point and, and being a person that you know has been in a city that has that really distinct culture and coming to here, which I think Baltimore has a distinct culture, but outside of people who have been here and who live here, I don't think really people get it. So what do you think some of the things about Baltimore, you, you touched on the grittiness, um, mm -hmm. really make it a unique thing? What are the things that are a part of Baltimore's culture for you from your standpoint? Yeah, so I think I touched on it a little bit, but to me, what the things I love about Baltimore is community and slash the creative community. It's my people here, <laughs> I adore and love, and I'm so very grateful for it. and especially the support from the creative community is honestly unlike any other that I have experienced. Um, I think it's just a beautiful community of a collective thriving artists and I love it. It's beautiful. But then also it's, it's realness in like Baltimore is Baltimore and it's, and it's not going to BS you. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm a very, I'm that kind of person too. I'm so, I'm, <laughs> I, I can't not just be me. So I love that. I love that it's just, we are who we are. Accept us or don't, we don't care. <laughs> And that, that comes through in kind of like observing your your social media presence and uh, your your background there. So let's 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 tap into. Um, tell me about the the Catterday Style blog and like what you're doing now. Because my understanding is there's been a a bit of a shift. So tell me about how that got started and kind of where you're at with that and your online presence and all at this point. Yeah, yeah. So I started that back in 2015, which feels like for ever ago, <laughs> a whole different time, truly. And it was just kind of, I started it as a creative outlet for me because I've, since ever since I moved here, I've just been working a regular nine to five admin customer service job. And I needed somewhere to put my creativity. And on Instagram, I had followed a couple people through some recommendations of friends that had great fashion style and were doing cool stuff. And they had blogs as did a lot of people at the time. So I started one because why the heck not? <laughs> and it took off in ways that I wasn't expecting. It connected with me with a lot of the friends that I have now. And yeah, I mean, there definitely has been a shift. I haven't been posting on it as much because I feel like blogs have kind of titrated down and so much has turned into video. So I call social media more of my blog and I've been trying to do more Instagram reels and like mini blogs and things like that. And, but also at the same time, I kind of want to bring it, bring it back and do a rebranding. So I'm not sure, um, but it's definitely been a fun creative process for me and slash like side hustle at times too. <laughs> Well, I think that's important where this, like my journey as a podcaster came out of this, I'm working in an office, it's fun, it pays the bills, but really yeah. uh, felt stifled creatively. And, you know, it's it's one of those things when you're a creative soul, creative spirit, and you're unable to do it, you feel like you're handcuffed in some ways, and you're looking for ways to do it. It's like, maybe I can do this spreadsheet in a different color way. Maybe that'll be, that'll satisfy me. No, it doesn't. It sucks. Uh, so, you know, I, I definitely relate to that. And I think I think you should bring it back. I think um, it, it catches my eye. And I think one of the things that I've noticed in there is that keen sense of style that you have. Um, so 
how would you describe your, your style of clothing, your approach to fashion overall? Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the compliments. Um, I love, that's kind of the one way that I am able to express my creativity is through fashion and I love it. And I, my, the way that I dress, I dress in what makes me feel good. And like, I dress for myself, not for anyone else. And I believe that people should be able to wear whatever they want to wear at any age in their life. Like, it doesn't matter. I like, for me, I love pink and I love rainbows and I love dressing and just fun things that people would look at and think that a toddler or a child or a teenager (laughs) would wear. Uh, But I love it too. And like, why not? Why not be creative? Why not have fun? Life is so short. Just wear, wear what makes you happy. So that's always my inspiration. And I try and just dress in fun, bright stuff. But that's not always it too, because I can also dress for my mood and you know, be a little moody at the same time. <laughs> I, I've seen some things on there that are uh, familiar. I think I've seen a few items that I've seen in Double Dutch. I think I've seen a few items from Patrice. Uh, yes. and, I, and I was just like, those are familiar. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, 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 my partner, my girlfriend, she buys from those places. And I was like, huh. Really? This is what's happening. I didn't do any interview with Patrice. I was like, OK, all right, I see what we got here. Yeah, yeah, I love her. She's so great. And uh, I like I like the whimsy nature of it, where it's just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put strawberries on these shorts. Deal with it. And I'm like, okay, yes. great. <laughs> yes. Um. So originally, I came across um the initial thing that stuck out was some of the landmarks, and I think that's one of the real pieces of uh value that comes out of your blog and your online presence. That you know, I'll see you down there uh, going to different places for uh, like like to for meals to hang out whatever right and it really is kind of like showing the city from a different point of view you know that often i think it it should be more of it right uh because we'll see the cracks and crevices more broadly and outside of baltimore but internally i think seeing more of the beautiful things the landmarks and things of that nature is really great so from 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 that standpoint in, in three words or less, because, you know, degree of difficulty, uh, what makes that, that brand, is one, is that intentional? And two, what makes that brand successful in like three words or less? Three words or less. I, for my brand, I would say my authenticity. Like, that's it. That, like, how authentic I am. Yeah. Like I said already, I can't, I can't be anything other than me. And I love to share what lights me up because hopefully it can also light someone else up because like our our superpower is being us being true to us like no one else can be like me so i'm gonna be weird i'm gonna share (laughs) what what i enjoy things through my perspective to also show like what's cool and fun and what I enjoy, but also to hopefully have people feel less alone in in their life, but just sharing, you know, whatever is going on from day to day sometimes. I dig it. So when it came when it came down to like being more just out there and being your authentic you, that's not in my opinion, in, in my experience, it's not always been easy for me. So, you know, it's like, oh, you know, you send the representative like, oh, people are like this. And then they're like, oh, you're fake. And it's like, oh, this is the real me. Wait, wait, one more second. You know, you'll like it. Um, so how how was it and kind of was it one of those things you kind of always had of I'm just going to be at least as much as I can? Or is it one of those? All right, I'm going to give you a little bit. And then I'm gonna give you some more. It's almost like when you go up on the the, the, the cough syrup, right? It's like I'm not gonna give you a spoonful. I'm mixing with apple juice first. You know, yeah. what was how was that for you? Was it always really intentional to put yourself out there as this is exactly who I am, or did you start off small and say, you know what, I'm gonna add a little bit more of my personality here? Yeah, so I definitely started off small. <laughs> Shy, like especially in high school, super shy, insecure, quiet girl. Um, but then just along the way, that's another reason why I think I tell people 30s are so good because you don't care about what other people think. And it like the older I get, the less I care. But then also life experiences along the way have really kind of encouraged me to be like, 
why, why not just be you from the get go? Mm -hmm. Because like I said, life is so freaking short. My daughter has battled leukemia almost all of her life and kind of seeing that through her eyes and realizing truly how every day is a gift. Mm -hmm. Why, why would I try to pretend to be someone else? You know, like that's just boring. But then also side note to that, I've recently in the past couple of years, like spring forwarded into kind of looking in towards what really lights me up because I recently got divorced <laughs> and I, for once in my life have chosen me because I think as women we're taught to be quiet, to please everyone else around us, to make sure everyone else around us is okay and happy and touched on. And I never really looked internally into what would light me up and what, what I actually enjoy in life. And I have been able to do that the past few years and it's been hard. It's been hard as hell. Life is hard as hell, but on the other side of it, I've just been able to be fully expressing myself and I love it. <laughs> that's, that's what we all aspire to be. And it takes courage to, to do that because uh, we, we all want that. And we want to be accepted at the same time. And yep. there's a almost like a rubric or, or, or a, uh, a script that other people write for us. It's like, this is how you're supposed to act. And it's like, oh, I don't do that. And it's like, oh, I guess my experience is invalid. And I, I would imagine that that's what a lot of people, especially like women, as you, you were describing, have to like kind of battle. But when you get to that point and you realize like, nah, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to do my own thing. That's, that's, yeah. that's yeah. a big moment. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also... I feel like the more authentic you are and you become, that's when your people that are meant to be with you will, will also meet you there. And on the other side of that is like, I know that there are scripts and there's like, well, you, we all just want to be accepted. And so we're going to try and fit this mold, but no bust out of that mold, be you be weird. And the weirdo, like the weirdos will meet you. And like, that's when you're going to have a true great connections. Honestly, it's, Bust out of bust out of the mold. Be weird. Yeah, I, I agree. My bust. my like tagline throughout throughout all of this. I love it. I love it. Uh, so this is the last real question that I have for you, and then I have a bunch more like rapid fire questions since I've oh, been snap. Okay. writing as we've been talking. Uh, so I find that we get to a spot where we look for our calling. We look for the things that really interest us, and sometimes I think we may add too much weight to it. It might be a thing that we're just doing. And it's like, look, I like to tell stories. I like to help people tell stories. That might be my calling, but it wasn't a direct line for me to get there. I you know, did drawing for a while. I did painting for a while. And you know, I thought I was a rapper at one point. That's a different story for a different podcast. Uh, <laughs> But I, I think ultimately you explore, you try things and you figure out what really sticks for you. So tell me about a time when you were encouraged to really, really explore what you were into and, and, and really what, it, what gave you that light and what lit you up. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, I think we really do put a lot of emphasis on. So I grew up in church and there's like a lot of emphasis on doing the right thing, doing God's will, blah, blah, blah. Like I grew up deep South Pentecostal. That's again, another time for like <laughs> another story for another time, but there's just so much emphasis on like doing the right thing. And exactly like you said, just jump in, just do it, just start it. And what is meant to be will work out for you. And I've been encouraged to explore. I don't know. I think like, I said with my divorce, I've had to kind of really pivot and look into just trying new stuff. Like, for example, I never really enjoyed hiking or like I never went out and hiked ever before. And I started doing a lot more solo things like hiking or solo trips. And I've been pushing myself to kind of do that more to find out what I enjoy. And I love hiking. I'm actually <laughs> going to go on a hike after this. And I'm so excited to just I just pop my like AirPods in and, and have a blast, but I never would have known it if I hadn't have tried. And yeah, I just think that like sometimes in life we're placed with, you know, what, like, what should we do? What should we try? Mm -hmm. What, like, what's, what's one thing you've always wanted to do? Just do it. Just start it. Just jump in. Don't huh. wait. 
you can take that off the list once you've done it. It's like, oh yeah, exactly. well, I did it, and wow, that stunk, or wow, that was great. Like, I mean, I I use I use food in that way of how can I like I've never been here. Maybe I can travel yes. travel there on a plate. You know, <laughs> maybe that's yes. the goal. All right, and alcohol. Uh, all right. <laughs> So I have about a dozen rapid fire questions for you. This is all your fault because you became so interesting as we were talking further. It's like more questions, more things to write in. <laughs> the layers. The yeah, layers. The, the layers. You're, you're very oniony over there in the most <laughs> positive, a uh, positive way. Um, all right. So uh, it's not a dozen. So I, I want to start off with this is I think I'm going to start calling it random fire because it feels like it's random questions, but asked really and answered really quickly. All right. So I'm going to start off with this one. Which hashtag describes you best? Ooh. They get progressively harder, by the way. Hashtag describe me best. I don't know. Hashtag get weird. <laughs> okay. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I like that. Uh, what's a gadget that you feel changed your life? Ooh. iPhone. A lot of people have been saying that. That's, that's a good one. Um what have you always dreamed of doing but haven't done dreamed of doing yeah it kind of falls into that vein of like i always wanted to do this i haven't done mm -hmm. it yet mm -hmm. i'd say travel more as in like out of state um or out of country i mean out of country because recently i'm on a paris kick and i want to do a solo trip to paris so it's on my list it's one of these days that'll be great uh what is your favorite season of the year? And that might be a very coded question. We'll talk off mic about that probably. <laughs> what is your favorite no, season? No, favorite of the year? season. That that's easy. Summer. Okay. I am a summer girl. I love the beach. It's it's my my cancer my cancer self. So oh, yeah, you're a cancer. Time, got so. it. Got it. Yeah. I I'm an Aquarius. I love the winter. I love snow. Uh, and it gets weird up here, though. I will say that much. Sometimes we get into the world snow, and it's like, <laughs> all right, can we can we turn it off a little bit? Um, <laughs> uh, what artists do you secretly listen to, but wouldn't want anyone to know about? There's none because <laughs> I, I love my guilty pleasures. Like I said, I embrace all aspects of myself. So I'm trying to think of the most embarrassing and nothing really comes to mind besides everyone knows that I love Justin Bieber. And I feel like that's not even embarrassing anymore at this point. Um, so yeah, the Biebs, okay. the Biebs, uh, favorite piece of Cajun slang, you know, that was going to be in there favorite. So probably my, what I used to use most commonly was like Misha, which means cute or endearing. So nice. I would often be like, Oh, Misha or Oh, Sha. Like I would say it all the time. <laughs> nice. nice. Little, little gambit reference there in uh, X Men. Uh, yes. Sorry. Oh, and also, side note, my last name is Richard. It's a Cajun last name. Oh, Richard. Everyone up here, everyone up here says Richard. <laughs> okay. I, I meant to do that in in my intro, but I I got too excited. Nice, nice. I want to make sure I got it right at the end. Uh, <laughs> and lastly, what are three things next to your bed? Like some people keep a bottle of water. Some people keep their like sleeping pills, their CPAP. I saw a guy rip, whip out earlier. I was like, are you dying, sir? Uh, like what are, what are three things that are always like next to your bed or have you? I have a stack of books next to my bed that often I am not reading enough of. <laughs> <laughs> I do have water there currently and candy because I am a late night snacker. What kind of candy do you have? right now like honestly i could even show you i think i have reese's <laughs> reese's okay. cups okay and then okay. i think i had gushers last night on there that's a top tier candy though reese's cups a top tier candy or what have you yeah yeah yeah, yeah you know, peanut butter one. and chocolate yeah well that's pretty much it um i want to one thank you for being on this podcast and two i want to invite you and encourage you to tell the fine folks where to check you out your blog all of that good stuff yes thank you so much for having me this has been so much fun I am at Catterday Style on Instagram. So check me out if you want to. <laughs> so for Elise Richard, <laughs> I'm Rob Lee saying that there is uh, art, fashion, style, just people traveling, just getting it in in Baltimore. You just got to look for it.